Hi, I'm Santo from VintageComputer.ca. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Nabu PC and the floppy drive. Progress in terms of what has been going on with it and projects that are related to the Nabu PC and the floppy drive and how it is used with other projects. This is the Nano PC and the configuration with this particular computer is with the floppy drive but there is one thing to note that is slightly different than the ones that are available on eBay. This particular Nano PC actually has a different firmware. So the firmware that comes on the eBay ones that have been uh, listed recently and sold have a Rev-A firmware that is a 4K EEPROM. So in this particular case, because I have a slightly different EEPROM, this allows a special boot menu for the Nabu PC. So you can see from the current Nabu PC, this is actually has the network adapter and uh, the adapter is actually not there. This is the one that is uh, emulated through DJ's project. So DJ has the Nabu RetroNet and uh, that emulates the adapter that talks to the cable system. So what you're seeing here is the option to one, load from cable, or two, load from floppy disk. Now, if you have the Rev-A firmware, it does not have the floppy disk menu option. So you can only go from cable. So my focus on this uh, project was to actually get the floppy disk to work with um, and boot from a CPM disk. Now the CPM disk, I did talk about this in the last video, uh, it's actually a disk image that I've recreated with uh, image, image disk and uh, it unfortunately does not boot. So in terms of uh, the ability for the Nabu PC to boot from that CPM floppy, there has been no, no progress. So the other thing, however, I've been able to do is to be able to use the floppy disk drive with the Nabu RetroNet. So I'm going to show that in just a second. But uh, in the meantime, here is a picture of the Rev-A and Rev-B firmware. Now, because the Rev-B firmware is 8K in size, there is a slight modification that you need to make to the Nabu PC to be able to use 8K. Now, because it is 8K and the Rev-A firmware is 4K and it's a 2732, I've actually written out uh, a 2764 EEPROM with two copies of the Rev-A so that uh, it acts basically like uh, a 2764 and it can access the 4K. So that's basically the difference and why I have a specifically written Rev-A EEPROM. So before we get into demonstration, what I'd like to do is to uh, talk about a couple of different projects related to the uh, floppy disk controller. Uh, the first project is the reproduction project. So this is one that I am involved in. This is one that uh, I basically took the floppy disk controller that is inside of the NABU and I've uh, taken pictures, I've taken pieces apart, I have removed the components so that we can see the traces, I've taken more, uh, more detailed pictures than are actually here because uh, those were required to be able to do it very accurate. and. Um, one of the things I want to make note on this particular page on my site, and I'll have uh, links in the description, is uh, the ability to change the Nabu PC to be able to use the either the 4K or the 8K EEPROM. Now, the Nabu PCs uh, that are shipping now are the 4K version, so they basically have a 2732 EEPROM in them. And uh, the one I have actually has the 8K EEPROM that I discussed earlier. This actually needs uh, a modification to uh, 
basically cut the trace for the 4K line and add a jumper for the 8K line so that you can use a 2764. Now, in this particular case, the floppy drive is able to be used with the Naboo network software with the Rev A EEPROM, which is 4K, so nothing needs to change. But once we uh, determine how to boot from floppy and uh, if people will require the Rev B EEPROM, then this uh, change will have to be made. But for now, it's not something that has to be changed until we get further along in the project. Now, this discussion for the floppy disk controller has uh, occurred on the Vintage Computer Federation forums. Uh, there's a thread there. I had put up pictures because a couple of people had contacted me about pictures and uh, one of the people on the forum actually stepped up and that is Clyball. Clyball actually has done reproductions in the past and he's done reproductions such as the Superboard 2 which is a, uh, a fairly large board with a keyboard and um, it's, a, it's a single board computer and it is quite uh, detailed so this this floppy disk controller is is very small in comparison and uh, he's actually gotten very far with it he's already has uh, schematics and layouts he's actually ordered the first set of boards so uh, what he'll be doing is testing that out to make sure that everything is okay making sure that there's nothing no traces missing nothing that was left off and uh, once that's tested, if there is any revisions, there'll be a, a second set of uh, boards created and then boards will be available to the community. So that's coming down the line. Now there's um, a couple of other projects going on. Uh, DJ has a YouTube uh, presence that has a number of videos. He actually uh, recreated the Naboo network he created the software that um, the, runs on a PC and uh, it will basically emulate the Naboo network. Um, I would check out some of his videos. You'll see the progress as he was going through and uh, figuring it out piece by piece. Um, the, uh, his software is available through HTTPS Naboo.ca and uh, you'll see that uh, the recreation of the Naboo network is called Naboo Retronet. He talks a little bit of how it uh, ran and there's downloads for this software um, through the downloads page. And uh, take a look at the Naboo internet adapter. This is where you want to take a look. Last I checked, there was not anything for it disk images yet. Uh, when we do figure out how to uh, run CPM, then the CPM images will be available here. So that's coming down the road. The other thing I want to mention, a uh, couple of things, is Leo Binkowski. He is a, or was a Naboo programmer, and a lot of the software for the Naboo network, he had created, uh, him along with uh, the team at Naboo, and uh, his YouTube uh, channel has a bunch of uh, videos on software and hardware that he had from back in the day. So it's pretty interesting to see some of the different uh, revisions of hardware. So for instance, one of the things I saw was an earlier version of a floppy disk controller that was quite different. Um, he actually had another controller that was for a hard drive. I would check out his channel if you haven't already. Some interesting stuff there. And then Adrian's Digital Basement, he had a video on the Naboo PC. If you want information on the history and uh, 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 a look at the hardware itself, um, take a look at his channel. There is, uh, it, it's a really nice video. So take a look at that. I'll put uh, links into the description for all of these. So just to give you a quick idea of my current setup, this is the Naboo PC. It has the floppy disk controller, which is the original. It has the dual 
floppy disk drive. Uh, it's got a monitor uh, to be able to see things. And this is my uh, PC that is running the uh, network adapter software from BJ. So this is what's allowing me to be able to use the Nabu PC with uh, the Nabu software from the emulated cable system. So to give you a quick recap, when I try to access or boot the Nabu PC from the CPM disk of, that I had created, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna select the two option to be able to uh, boot from the floppy disk. And I'm gonna show you quickly again what uh, happens. So I'm pressing two and enter. And when I press enter, you'll see some quick disk access and then the drive light will stay on and the motor will continue to run. So at this point, the it tried to boot, uh, but if we look at the screen, it says loading disk and uh, that is basically where it ends. The drive will continue to run and uh, I cannot do anything further at this point. Now, uh, Leo Binkowski is actually going to be sending me a CPM floppy disk that he has and I will be trying that. Now I'm going to show you some of the software that will actually run with the Nabu floppy drive. And so there are a few titles that actually run that need the floppy drive or are better with the floppy drive. And I'll give you a quick demonstration of that coming up. Okay, so I'm just bringing it up right now. This is the uh, opening screen that uh, shows an animation. You can sit here and watch the animation or you can press go to get out of there. Now to get to uh, the disk utilities menu. Uh, it's actually under network services. So I'm going to press one. I'm going to go under network guide, which is one again. And I'm going to go to the number three. Now what you see here is you see the digital research copyright. This is basically um, CPM running. And all of these are the utilities that come with CPM. So this is a fresh disk in drive A, and I'm going to go ahead and format, format the disk. It asks me which drive. I'm going to say it's in drive A, single-sided, yes. Um, Nabu disk drives actually came with single-sided disk drives. So um, both of them are actually single-sided. I have put in double-sided disks in the NABU and it works, but um, the funny thing is, is when you try to do a format, it will actually format both sides, but it'll only verify one side. So I think it's a little bit buggy, so I'm sticking with the single-sided disk drives, but when the NABU PC floppy disk controller is available, you can probably use 360K disk drives. So I'm going to say yes to single-sided, 48 tracks per inch. It's asking me to put a disk in the drive and press go. So you can hear it going uh, through each of the different tracks as it's formatting. It'll actually get to track 39 and then verify. So now it's verifying. It's kind of a noisy drive, but when they work, it's music to your ears. Okay, so total bad sectors is zero. That's a good thing. So I don't want to format anymore. Um, I'm using the no button. And it's funny with some of these menus that instead of pressing N and go, sometimes you have to press the no button and go. Otherwise, you'll see garbage on the screen. So that's just a bug to watch out for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a show. And it's asking me uh, which drive I'm gonna show A. Asking me to put a disk in, pressing go. 
and you see that we now have a NABU double-sided, or sorry, double-density disc, single-sided. And this is the geometry of the diskette. So it's uh, five blocks per track. There's 200 blocks per volume. Sector size is 1024, and there's five sectors per track, and there's uh, 40 tracks per volume. So total bytes is 192K. So I'm gonna say no to show. I'm going to do a directory. Now, one of the things is you can type in directory and then go and then it'll ask you and then you press A or you can just do D-I-R-A colon and it will just jump in and uh, go right in and show you what information is there. Now, in this case, it's a brand new floppy, so there's no files. But what I'm going to do is I have a second floppy that is in drive B and I believe it has files on it. Oops. So I'm going to go dir b colon, and there are a number of files. Now, these files on drive B are actually the files that are on the NABU per one image. So I've basically recreated the disk uh, with uh, image disk. I've run 22 disk to copy the files off of the NABU per one disk and copy them back onto this disk. So this is a different disk. Um, and so all of the files are here. If I try to put the original NABU per one disk in here, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna put that in drive B. Okay, and I'm going to do a dir b colon. And this is what I see off of the original image. Okay, so the information is a little bit messed up. Now, uh, I'll get into what I had to do specifically and, and why things are like this. But uh, I'm going to get out of here right now and I'm going to take out the empty disk that I have in drive A and I'm going to put that disk in that had all of the uh, NABU files on it. Okay, so now if I do a DIR of A colon, this is the disk that has all of the uh, NABU files from the original image. So all of these files are actually on drive A and so if I uh, end the directory. I'm going to do a show on a colon. Okay, now you see that this is a NABU double density diskette, all of the geometry. In this case, there's only 7K remaining. Okay, so now I'm going to do a um, show on B colon, which is the NABU per one imaged disk. And the funny thing about this is you'll see at the top, it thinks it's an Osborne disk. Now, what I've had to do, and I've played around with this a little bit, this is uh, an Osborne version two image. Or so it, the NABU thinks it's, a, it's an Osborne to image and what it's doing is it's actually looking at the wrong place for the directory so in the case of the nabu uh, diskette it's at um, track one sector one in the case of the osborne it's not there it's in a different location the only thing is is that the nabu per one uh, image and disk when I create it it has the directory in the same spot but forever whatever reason the NABU thinks that it's an Osborne disk and because of that I'm not able to see the files on that diskette and what I'm not sure is if I have the Rev B EEPROM 
in the NABU and I try to boot from that NABU per one image disk, if it thinks it's an Osborne and it's going to the wrong spot to look for the cpm3.sys file. So this is all the sort of investigation I'm trying to figure out. And once the floppy disk controller is recreated, more people will be able to look into that. Okay, so this is all the stuff that you can do. Um, you can run, set, show, all of that kind of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to exit. Now, when I exit, uh, it basically gets to this screen here, and I don't know if it's because it has an issue for whatever, perhaps it's a bug, I'm not sure. So what I have to do is I have to do a reset. I press the reset button on the front of the NABU, and it is going to boot up again. And it's essentially going to go right back to the same menu that I was in. So this is the disk utilities menu. Okay, so I'm going to go back and uh, I pressed the wrong button there. So I'm going to use the arrows to exit. Okay, so uh, that's where basically the disk menus is and it's in number one. I'm going to go to number five, which is home management. And here is NABU Basic. So uh, I'm going to go into Basic now. Uh, let me see here. So NABU Basic is loading. And there we go. So this is NABU Basic version 2. Now, if I I can go ahead and run a basic program, I can write it up, I can do everything, but if you don't have a NABU floppy disk, you can't save or retrieve anything. So if I do a files command, what this thing is going to show me is the catalog of uh, files that are on the floppy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a quick program, so let's say 10 print hello and I'm going to save hello dot BAS okay so I'm going to do a files again I can't remember where it shows up on here it probably will show up on the bottom yes there it is down at the bottom so I'm gonna run Okay, and there's the hello. I'm going to do a new and run again. And it's going to give me an error because there's nothing to run. Then I'm going to do a load hello. Oops. I'm going to do a load hello.bas. I wonder if I messed things up there. But uh, let's do a new load. Oh, you know what? I might have to not. No. Okay, so I'm going to do one more thing. And again, this is a bit of experimentation. So I'm going to say 10 print hello one L, oh, sorry, two L's. I'm going to do a save. Oops, sorry, can't seem to type. I'm going to save test, and I'm not going to put an extension. I'm going to do new. I'm going to do load test. Okay, and there it is. Uh, what I, I didn't have to put the extension in, and I think putting the extension in might have messed things up. 
again, there's uh, it's kind of buggy, but uh, it does work. So if I do a list, there is my hello. Okay, so that's one way to, uh, I can't do quit. What I need to do is to do a, an exit. So to do an exit, you hold down the symbol key and you press pause, which is the exit. Okay, there's no exit, no quit, no anything in basic. You have to do that. And again, it comes back to this. So I'm gonna hit the reset button. And it's gonna go ahead and reload again. And we're back to that menu. So it's got to be under home management, um, but it's probably not on this page. I got a page over. Um, there it is, Nabu Writer. So I'm assuming a lot of these, uh, like Paint Pot, I, it's pro I'm assuming it's a paint program. I haven't tried that quite yet. But uh, Nabu Writer is a word processor, and that also needs the floppy drive to save any files. I'm assuming that if there is a paint program, that's gonna save some files and retrieve them and so on. So I'm gonna go into help and I'm going to press the help button, which is symbol TV. Uh, now I'm trying to remember, I did this, but ah, here it is. So saving files, you have to press the escape key you have to type in the file name and then you do a symbol S to save or you can do a symbol W to save and exit. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, leave help by pressing go. File name is, uh, let's call it test.txt. Okay, it's basically saying the file was not found, we will create it. So this is a test and I'm going to do with escape. The argument is test.text symbol. I'm holding down the symbol and I'm pressing W. Do you want to save? Yes. Uh, and in this case, you have to press the yes button. Okay, so that went ahead and saved. Um, and uh, you can, uh, I, I didn't find the command to retrieve it. You can, it's probably in the help somewhere, but uh, if you do an escape, um, and like it said, putting in the file name and then symbol W. Then you say yes. This is where it will save and exit. I'm going to do a symbol exit and say yes. And that gets us out as well. Pressing the reset button. And we're going to get back to the NABU system. So you can see that the floppy disk controller is actually uh, used in a few different uh, programs and utilities within the NABU software. I'm sure that as uh, further NABU software is discovered and put into the system, there will be other pieces of the software that require the floppy disk as well. Um, now, these particular floppy disks they can be archived, they can be um, rewritten back. Uh, I'll get into another video to discuss how to uh, do that, perhaps if there's people who may not be familiar with how to do that. But um, that is basically it. So I'm gonna end this video here. If you have any comments, please uh, put comments in. And uh, until next time, Thanks for watching.